I am Rachel Ang, co-founder of Thought Digital Philippines, and today I will be talking to you guys about ethical brand cultures and the politics of brand marketing. Now, you're probably thinking that, okay, business and politics don't really mix together. And for the longest time, we believed that, right? You might also say that, you know, it's more profitable in the long run to actually not speak up about it. And that's true. The less you offend, the more people will buy. There is truth to that. Um, but there is also a reason why the word sustainability and ethical are buzzwords right now. There is a reason why politics in brand marketing actually exists. And the reason for this is that, you know, things are changing and consumers are changing. Consumers of today and the consumers of tomorrow, they are different from the consumers that we've come to know. Um, long gone are the mad men days where we as a brand or we as marketers actually dictate to consumers what they would want. Now it's the other way around. Now the consumer actually dictates to brands what they actually want. and. This is what the brands produce. And this is also why the bigger brands actually look up to the younger people to tell them where to go to lead the way. Because in five or 10 years, these are the consumers that they would want to talk to. And the fact of the matter is that these consumers care more than just about your product. They care for a business or a brand that actually resonates with their personal narrative. And they care about things that matter because they are, you know, they are globally connected through social media. They're aware of things that are happening, not just in their local vicinities, but also in, in other countries as well. So this is very important to them. And as a business, this is also something that you should consider that you should think about if the consumers of the future are actually caring about these issues and if the bigger brands or bigger corporations are actually stepping going out of their way to towards this more social political thrust then why aren't you doing it so that is why we are having this conversation today Let's talk about ethical brand culture. What exactly is an ethical brand culture? A business that upholds ethical brand culture believes in sustainability, not just in the literal sense, but in all aspects of the word. They live it, they act it out, and it's holistically ingrained into their, into their brand and into their company's mission and vision. So that is what ethical brand culture is. And now I would want to talk to you guys about how you can actually create a more ethical brand culture overall in your company. And the first step to doing this is to just acknowledge that there's a problem, that there's something missing or there's something that you are not aware of and that you would want to be aware of. No matter how progressive you are, there will always be a new issue or something that you missed. And there can always be something to improve upon. So that's the first step. The second step is to actually learn more about it, educate yourself about it. Of course, it's great to be aware, but you need to have more information and that way you can also inform other people and advocate about it. And that leads us to the third step, which is advocacy, being your own champion. A great example of this would actually be Nike. They, they have been quite late to the game, but in recent years, um, they've been doing really great campaigns and changes in their internal systems and also their marketing. So 
there was this one controversial video where they hired Colin Kaepernick uh, during that time when he kneeled down during during the national anthem, the U.S. national anthem. A lot of people actually found this very controversial. A lot disagreed with it, um, with this kind of protest, and Nike took a stand. You know, they they traversed through that controversy because they know what they believe in and they stand with it. They don't care if there are a lot of negative comments on it. Um, they stood by it and they stood by Colin Kaepernick. And they're continually doing that, not just for this specific issue about Black Lives Matter, but also in other um, other aspects as well, like sustainability, for example, inclusivity overall, not just um, for black people, but generally people of color, people who are part of the minorities, LGBTQ plus um, members of society. So they're, they're really trying to help make a change and living out their, their own brand message, you know, which is just do it. And they did it. And they're still doing it now. So that's a really, really good example of um, an ethical brand culture that they're actually changing. Um, the fourth step is to listen to your team members and your employees. Um, right now, there is a big, um, big hype, I would say. And a big conversation surrounding Black Lives Matter, and there, there was this uh, business owner who started this pull up for change campaign. So this page is basically asking brands to be transparent about what they're currently doing about the the BLM movement, and this page also requires transparency in terms of the uh, employment um, ecosystem of of these brands that they're talking to so for example how many percent of your um, executive board is actually black or a person of color and by doing so this page actually holds brands accountable because they the brand realized that that's right we are not doing enough we are not changing the injustices around our internal systems and we promise to do more. Now, the question is if they will actually do more, uh, but a lot of brands actually pledged uh, to do so. And that is, you know, that is the reason why it would be good to start with your own employees first because as much as you would want to participate in a bigger movement, you have to start within yourself. You have to start within your internal systems to change these internal systems first before you can you can make a difference elsewhere or influence other people to make a difference. You have to make a difference within yourself and within your own organization. And lastly, um, the last step, of course, is to actually do it, like I said, uh, with Nike, right? Just do it. Um, if it's good to be aware and to listen and to advocate about it. But at the end of the day, what's more important is that you actually do something about it. You can plan like a short-term and a long-term action plan. and you can you can work on improving these so for example of short term there are a lot of organizations that you can donate to um, you can also start looking within your system is there something unjust in our hiring process is uh, are we actually inclusive for example uh, do women have the same rights or do they earn the same salary as our male employees these are some really good questions to start with and in the long term uh, there are brands who also partner for example with NGOs you can 
provide some of your proceeds to these NGOs, for example. And yeah, it's a, it's a matter of really doing things. And those are the five things that you can do to help create a more ethical brand culture within your company. And if you have any questions or you want to read more about it, you can check out .digitalph.com or follow us and message us on social media .digitalph on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Thank you.